All you Prince fans, what you think? Y'all mad at me for saying that? Y'all want to go find, you know, Morris Day and do a whole witch hunt on him because he's telling his side of the story? Y'all bitches Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you do not have a retirement slash investment plan in place through your employer, please check out the Acorn app below. Find out how Google, Apple, JP Morgan, Chase, and all them other rich motherfuckers can work for you. Now, Let's talk about Morris Day's A Princely Time in Funk, part two. Two years in with Grand Central Stations, and they are playing everywhere, everything, bar mitzvahs, high school proms, swimming pool parties, weddings, everything. And they are doing all kinds of funk music, you know, like Shaka Khan, Rufus, the Ohio players, Prince chimes in and says, hey, you making it seem like we was a cover band or something. Okay, well, all right, Prince, but guess what? We had to pay the bills, and how you did it was you would play the hits, get them people to shake in their booties, and then you would throw a little bit of original music in there. But Morris Day had no problem with telling Prince, Prince, you know goddamn well that our band, Grand Central Station, was influenced by the greats. George Clinton, uh, the Isley Brothers, Boosty Collins, Sly and the Family Stone, James Brown. Let's not pretend, brother. We were influenced by the greats. It's so funny. It seems like Morris has to almost like talk to uh, Prince like he's a child. Mm. So now Morris Day compares Prince to Elvis in regards to the appeal with the women, uh, how he performed, how captivating he was. But Morris Day was sure to point out that although Prince and Elvis had that same stage presence, Prince, however did everything. He wrote, he arranged, he produced everything on his own. Morris Day goes on with his conversation with Prince, explaining that, Prince, your brilliance is undeniable. The problem was that you cloaked yourself in mystery. Morris and Day saw it as Prince protecting himself and at the same time being controlling. Because how can you figure a person out if you don't understand them. Oh, Prince was old. That was old, methodical, conniving motherfucker. Okay. Morris Day would go on to explain how Prince did have his moments where he would laugh and he would smile, and then like that, he would go back to the straight face. Oh, nigga, that's crazy. Okay, so Prince's mother, Maddie, divorced Prince's father and married a man named Haywood Baker. Now, Maddie and Haywood eventually had Prince's younger brother, Omar. There was a piano in the family house down in the basement. Prince would go down there, create, and creates all kinds of the purple magic all over the place. The problem was, was that Prince and his stepfather, Haywood, did not get along with each other. Now, Prince's mother was a docile woman. She wasn't the type to you know, jump in, you know, big daddy face and be like, don't put your hands on my child. Cause you know, some of you women, you know, if a ninja put a hand on your baby, y'all be pulling out that, you know, that glocka. If you know what I'm saying, y'all will put a nigga down for touching y'all children. But eh, I don't blame you. Protect your children at all costs, right? Because Maddie was an old docile woman. Prince said, you know what? I'm about to leave here and go stay with my pappy. And I wonder if... Prince's mother on the inside was saying, mm hmm, go live with that nigga. And then you can find out he ain't shit. And when you find out he ain't shit, don't come back here, goddammit. Prince left his mother's house and moved in with his father. He thought that because his father, who also 
used the name Prince creatively because his father was a serious musician. Uh, he Prince thought that his father would understand him more and that he could work better with his pappy. Sure. Prince Pappy was like Skipper because that's what he used to call Prince. Baby Prince. Big Prince would call Baby Prince Skipper. Skipper, don't bring no bitches in my house. Don't come in this house past 11 o'clock. Don't leave no dishes in the sink. Don't breathe. Don't eat. Don't smile. Don't do nothing. Just sit there and be fucking quiet. Dig this. Okay, Prince might have been able to wash all his dishes and scrub the floors and the walls and everything like that. Oh, but Prince couldn't keep the bitches out of his pappy's house, okay? And Prince was like, whoa, hold on, Morris. You don't know everything. Morris was like, Prince, stop it. I know what I know. You love the bitches. So eventually, Prince got kicked out of his pappy house because he couldn't keep the bitches out of his pappy house. The mystery. All the women wanted to know what the hell was going on with the man with the pink bikinis on and the afro. I said, straight bitches always curious about old ambiguous mother hunter. You be like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe, I, you think these young hip hop guys who be wearing the pearls and the fingernail polish be getting, I don't know. So now Prince is living with Andre Simone. Andre Simone is friend to Morris Day. Don't forget that. He's friend to Morris Day and he's the guitar player for Prince. Okay? But anyway, Morris Day thought of it as a good and a bad thing because Prince was right there and whenever they get ready to practice or if they had the idea, hey Prince, what you think? Now that was the good part. The bad part was that when they wanted to be smoking some marijuana, this nigga come banging on the goddamn door talking about I got an idea. Morris Day said sometimes they would let that motherfucker bang all night long, depending on how good the weed was. You know. We go on to talk when Morris say, honestly, I love weed. Weed is good to me. Weed is good to a lot of people, Morris Day. You know. Morris Day goes on to talk about his love of marijuana. Okay, now Prince didn't do drugs. You know. That's why his ass was so uptight. Maybe if he did some drugs, he would be better. But Morris Day goes on to elaborate that Prince felt like drugs altered you. And Prince did not want his creativity to be altered. Whenever he got the feeling of, ooh, this could be good. He wanted to be able to consciously take care of what he needed to take care of. And drugs would have gotten away. Morris Day, on the other hand, shit. Now we're going to get into Morris Day Mammy versus Prince. Now, at this time, Morris Day's mother is the manager. She's pretty much the person that's paying for the studio time, um, getting gigs for them. She's doing everything that um, she could do, you know, getting in touch with record execs because... Like I said earlier, Morris Day's mother really believed in Grand Central Station. The problem is, Prince can't let nobody be in control of him, child. So, so Prince interjects, yo mammy ain't do what she said she was gonna do. Morris Day say, hold on Clarence, pull back, stand down, soldier. That's my mother you talking about. Prince said, I know, but she still ain't say what she still ain't do what she said she was going to do. Morris Day responds and say, you were impatient. And who is you to talk about anything when my mother out here is still trying to work deals for us and you over there snap crackling and popping with that dude Hamsley. It was an old ad dude. Ad, ad like uh, marketing and ads and promos and stuff like that. But anyway, he had old ad company, child. And Prince was working with the ad dude Hamsley who had got Prince a solo deal with Warner Brothers. Child Grand Central Station ain't no. All you Prince fans, what you think? Y'all mad at me for saying that? Y'all want to go find, you know, Morris Day and do a whole witch hunt on him because he's telling his side of the story? Y'all bitches is crazy. Y'all bitches is crazy. So let's expound with this few gazy Warner Brothers 
solo deal situation. Ooh, you Prince people about to be mad, but y'all will be okay. Y'all bitches will be okay. What happened was Prince got a deal, a solo deal with Warner Brothers using a Grand Central tape. Prince lied and said that it was him that was playing all the instruments. Prince chimed in and said, well, I could play all the instruments. You know that. Morris Day said, but you didn't. Prince said, but I could. Morris Day chimed in and said, you were a fraud. You told them that it was all you. And it was a demo of all of us in Grand Central Station. What Morris Day also said was that you left us. You left us to scramble around and find something or someone to replace you. And you know that you are irreplaceable. Mm. You got there off of a Grand Central demo and then you left Grand Central. So now Grand Central Station moved on and they rebranded themselves as a group called Champagne. They had power, but not the star power that Prince gave them. Eventually, Andre Simone of Champagne slash Grand Central Station left. Prince called him and said, look, brother, I need you in new power generation. Morris Day was still hurt. He felt like, damn, I'm not even mad at Andre Simone because if I had the opportunity, I would have left too. So now Morris Day is having a heartfelt conversation with Prince. When you left us and went to Warner Brothers, Everything stopped for us. Champagne fizzled out. I dropped out of high school and I had no skills except for playing the drums. You left us, brother. So of course he's going through some depression, but he found himself back in love when he met a young lady named Jennifer Graves. And on October 17th, 1975, he had a daughter. Now, he had no job. He had no way of supporting his child and his girlfriend. He loved her, he loved his child, but he was depressed. Now, I applaud him for saying that as an 18-year-old young man that he lacked maturity to be a father and he had no direction. Meanwhile, his mother had bought a Grand Prix T-top and moved to Maryland. Child, I did not know this. You know, I spoke about this previously in another video. But child, I didn't know that uh, 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 Morris Day was down here. Or not down here, but in um, back home, living in Montgomery County and Gaithersburg, working at the damn Montgomery Ward. He was okay. working at the Montgomery Ward, renting cars sitting at the desk, depressed. His mother had eventually got a good government job. I told you down in the DMV, the way that you come up, when you live in uh, DC, Maryland, or Virginia, the come up is always a good government job. And she ended up eventually getting her old good government job, right? Now, the overall goal for Morris Day and his mother was to bring Jennifer and his daughter Tiana to Maryland. Now, his older sister, Morris Day's older sister, Sandy, stayed in Minneapolis. His younger brother, Jesse, moved in with his father in the Illinois. Now, being as though the mother, I told you she was a dreamer. Now, I thought she was a Pisces. No, ma'am, she was a Cancer. Same damn thing when it comes down to their children, child. Same damn thing. They are the mothers of the universe. But Morris Day's mother still believed in Morris Day's capability. Morris Day knew that he wasn't Prince, but it didn't matter because Morris Day's mother was still riding out there to uh, New York trying to get in contact with them regular execs to have something to happen for her son. Now, what Morris Day said was while he spent time in the DMV, he honed in on his capabilities as a jazz drummer. So that's where he learned a different type of skill. He wasn't just playing funk then. He had learned how to work the jazz scene in DC. Yeah. Now, Morris Day admitted that he was a decent jazz drummer, but he knew 
where his heart was. It was with the funk. At this time, Tiana and Jennifer are living in Maryland. Morse Day is still depressed because he can't afford the apartment that all three of them is living in. His mother is helping him to pay the rent that houses his family. Eventually, Jennifer and Tiana move back to Minneapolis. So one day while he at the desk at Montgomery Ward renting pentos, a song come on the radio, it's Soft and Wet by Prince. Morse Day say to his coworker, hey, I used to play with him. The coworker say, show buddy, show. No, 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 that's my friend. That's my man. I used to play in Grand Central Station with him. Okay, brother, well, you're working here at the Montgomery Ward with me now. He said after he got off work, he went to the record store, child. If, if you, if you, how do you explain the record store? Okay, all right. So a record store is a place where you would go to buy music. Like, it. How, did, how can you explain record store to these motherfuckers now? Okay, so, uh, fuck. Uh, okay, okay, all right. This is a record, okay, or an album, okay? This is what it looks like. This. And you would put it on something called a record player, and it would, like, spin around, and you would put a needle on it. And you would have to go to what we called a record store to buy these, okay? Anyway, Morris Day went to the record store and bought Soft and Wet. Morris Day described first Prince's first album as okay. He also talked about how Prince loved R&B, but he knew that the money was in crossover. Because if you do the numbers on it, African Americans only make up 12% of the population here in America. Okay, dig this. If 12% is only buying your music, then all you gonna get is 12% of the money. Prince okay. knew that he needed to have some crossover appeal. He needed to throw some white people in there, Latina. He needed to do all that because he wanted all the money. Okay, but he sees himself as a loser. He's sitting at the desk of Montgomery Ward passing out pintos. His good friend that he used to be in the band with is on the radio. And now his mammy talking about, oh, we finna move to California. Now, for a second, he ponders going back to Minneapolis. He say, nah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead on over there to California with my mammy. To go stay with my aunt Regina. That goddamn mother man, she was she was not afraid of moving around. I'm telling you, that's a water sign thing. My mother was a Pisces. We had about one thousand places that I lived along the way, child. I don't know. We ain't get put out of nothing now. It's just my mother get tired of old. I'm bored. Let me move on. Aunt Regina, I guess, left Uncle Spike down there in Minneapolis and moved to California. Now, when Morris Day got there. Morse Day found a job on a construction site. That nigga had a nervous breakdown and was like, I can't do this manual labor. I can't do this, child. Then he went to become a security guard. That ain't work. He said, I can't do no security job either. Fuck. I'm living in this house and it's 97 people living in this house. You know, Regina, Aunt Regina got a bunch of niggas and a bunch of babies. I can't do it. I want to be the only one that makes you come running. I want to be your lover. Guess what? Morse Day can't take the pressure. He say, uh-uh. I'm going back to Minneapolis. Now, if you have not already done so, please make sure that you like and share this video because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And... Remember this, the same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one. Peace. Get down.